frame of his bed to accommodate his extraordinary height. Members of the Beatles also made their presence felt. The first was George Harrison, together with his wife, Patty, who arrived incognito in Bombay in September 1966 and checked into a suite at the hotel under the names of Mr. and Mrs. Sam Wells. George Harrison had been invited to India by Ravi Shankar, the master of the sitar, who had first introduced Indian classical music to the West with his concerts. George's imagination had been fired, and he had asked Ravi Shankar to introduce him to play the sitar. Now, the Beatles were then at the height of their fame, so to avoid the attention of both the press and the crowds, George Harrison had grown a mustache and cut his long hair short. His presence in the hotel remained a closely guarded secret, known only to a select few, and at first, as Ravi Shankar and one of his assistants called in at the Taj to give him instructions, his presence remained undetected. But after remaining secluded in his suite for several days, George had had enough, and he ventured down into the lobby. A young lift attendant, who happened to be an enthusiastic listener to pop music, recognized him, and within minutes, the secret was out. Ravi Shankar, in his autobiography, Raja Mala, recounts what happened next. That was when the big hullabaloo erupted, and thousands of boys and girls in the street outside shouting, we want George! <laughs> Two years later, George is followed out to India by the rest of the Beatles. John Lennon returned to the Taj, this time in the company of his future wife, Yoko Ono. For five days and nights, the lobby managers and security staff had their hands full of hundreds of young fans and autograph hunters, tried every trick in the book to gain access to the hotel. They need not have bothered, for throughout the entire duration of their stay, John and Yoko never left their suite. All their requirements were ordered over the phone and handed over at the door. No one, not even the room cleaners, were allowed in. Musical talent of a different form, a different order, was provided by the violinist Nelly Mehta, who from 1939 onwards played light music with his melody trio during the businessman's lunch in the ballroom. His was a familiar face and sound throughout the war years, and being a classical musician by training, he occasionally gave concerts at the Taj. <clears throat> That's a mistake on me. <laughs> Um, years of having to play lunchtime music have, alas, monopolized his talent, noted a perceptive British observer. But I have heard many of the famous ones of the day and Mecca play the Mendelssohn Concerto, and I found it difficult to tell the difference. He is certainly the finest instrumentalist in the East. Catherine Courtney remembers how Melly Mecca sometimes brought along a small boy to his concerts. The Bombay Chamber Orchestra used to play at the Taj every Sunday morning, and this little boy used to stand and conduct behind the conductor. This was Melimetta's son, Zubin, who grew up to become one of the greatest conductors of the age. 